Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're going to be ranking the top 10 best shooting guards in NBA 2K24, my team, including gambling cards. So really, really good, deep list here. The shooting guard position, including gambling cards. There's a lot of good gambling shooting guards. Unfortunately, not as many good non-gambling shooting guards, which is why there's a total of like... I don't know, not very many cards on this list as a whole, unfortunately, but I am still excited about this video. And before we hop into it, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 25,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day, tons of consistent daily My Team content. Would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. And let's start off with number 10, which is going to be Mike Miller. Um, I think this is the best viable shooting guard in the game right now. At six foot eight with legit a 90 driving dunk, versatile, good defense, got gold and movable enforcer, legitimately capable slasher, solid playmaker, curry slide, amazing release. He's basically a better Galaxy Opal Cal Corver, and overall, he is a very, very good card. No doubt about that. Uh, I do think there are arguably a couple of guys better than him. I mean, eh. In terms of viable shooting guards, there really aren't. Like, you could maybe make an argument for Corver, but I think he's more athletic than Corver. He's taller than Corver. I think he's just a better all around option than a guy like Corver. So, to me, I feel like it's probably pretty fair to put him at number 10, and I think he's the only viable card on this list, unfortunately. Brandon Roy is number 9. B. Roy is good. Sorry, Brandon Roy is not number 9. I lied. Carmelo Anthony is number 9. I don't even think that Brandon Roy cracks the top 10, and that's and that's no joke. Um, as, as, as much as he's a fine card, he doesn't have a great escape, and I think I would actually take Mike Miller over him personally, probably. Carmelo 6'7 with a 7-foot wingspan. The thing about Carmelo is he's really good defensively. Hoff move one forcer, anchor post lockdown. He can really guard on the interior as well as the perimeter, and that provides a lot of positional versatility and a lot of switchability. Super complete stats and badges, and that's what makes him great, because his sigs could be a little better. His release is good. His protein two fade is super nice but his sigs can be a little better he's not unbelievably big he doesn't have the greatest animations but i think he's still a really good card and i think number nine is a totally fair spot for him number eight gonna be vince carter Again, the thing about this list, guys like Brandon Roy, Kyle Korver, Andre Iguodala don't even make this list. Like, this is a really strong list. So remember, guys who are really good cards, like events at number eight, it is pretty fair because he's he's super good, super complete. But his animations, I mean, his dribble style could be a little better. D-book isn't bad, but it could be a little better. His escape could be a little better. His behind the back could be a little better. His drag back could be a little better. Like, there's some things to nitpick at. And that's not to say that he's a bad card. He's a very good card, very usable card. And I still use him on my God Squad. I think he's super solid. All of these guys are very usable to shoot our position in addition to another probably 10 guys that aren't on this list like that is how deep the shooting guard position is right now it's just i think number eight is events number seven is the opal kobe i still cannot get over the fact that collector level is not a kobe reward anymore and if they drop a kobe in packs this year i literally don't know what what we'll do but it's just uh, this game is really disappointing in a lot of ways but i will say this opal kobe is still absolutely phenomenal um even being a gambling only card unfortunately um, he has gold and movable enforcer. He's still Kobe, man. He's just Kobe with a very quick release um, and with a movable enforcer. He's the pink diamond, but better. That's what he is. And I think Kobe still plays at an absolutely elite level and is one of the better cards in the game. And obviously a Dark Matter Kobe, 100 overall Kobe, whatever, will be one of the best shooting guards in the game again, just as always. It's just disappointing because I don't think as a whole, I'm not sure it's going to matter that much because I don't think Kobe's going to be attainable when he does come out. And that is a real shame. So... It is what it is. Number six, going to be Scotty Pippen. 6'8", uh, a lot of size, a lot of defense, really good. Six could be a little better, though. That's the thing. Not the best escape. Not an elite level behind the back. Pro 2 Fade is great. Really good release. Elite defender. Just Sigs could be a little better. If, if we're nitpicking anything, that's the thing you're going to nitpick with this card. Not to say he's bad at all, because he's certainly not. I just don't think he is the very best of the best. And that, I guess, uh, doesn't. I mean, that does not kill the card by any means. But I think it maybe heralds him back just a little bit when it comes to certain things. Um... It's, it's just how strong the position is at the end of the day, though. Like, Ricky Davis at number five. I mean, this card is a legit primary ball handler with top-tier sigs, super complete stats and badges, great animations all the way around, an elite-level release, not missing anything super important, um, can get everything he doesn't have. Like, he is a great, great card in a lot of ways, and I think putting him number five is like, it's just the position is so deep that it's hard to put a guy 
I mean, I don't know. There's so many good cards that it almost becomes a pendant in a lot of ways. But a guy like Ron Artest, who has Hoff Movable Enforcer instead of Gold, which Ricky has. Um, same size as Ricky, basically. Very similar release, very similar SIGs. But Hoff Movable Enforcer instead of Gold, I think probably a slightly better card. They pretty much do the same exact thing in a lot of ways. But I think um, I would probably lean Artest as, in my opinion, the better overall option. Just by a very small margin. Again, you can switch these guys around in a lot of orders if you want. But I think Artest is probably the most complete of these three guys him ricky and pippin i think all of them are on the exact same tier then you get to your top top tier of shooting guard which stops, starts off with Kawhi. Kawhi, to be fair is more so in this pippin ron ricky uh, tier honestly like it, they're all so close like i think Kawhi's top three to me longer wingspan helps him a little bit his defensive animations are so good he's not the playmaker that our test is and i'm not going to sit here and act like he is he's just not but he is still super athletic, super good defensively, elite level slasher, still has phenomenal SIGs. His SIGs are better than Ron's. His playmaking badges just aren't quite as elite. But I do think as an overall card, he is really, really good still uh, and provides a ton of value overall in... My dog is freaking scratching the wall right now behind me. I apologize. Not scratching, but he's just making noise, chasing his tail. So I apologize if y'all can hear that. But... Um, uh, Kawhi, he's top three in my opinion because they gave him per near perfect six. That's the thing that really elevates this card is you know, having the tray escape and all that type of stuff in addition to everything else about the card. So I think he's super duper solid. Um, and then at number two, you have Dr. J. Obviously, Dr. J is, I mean, Dr. J is Dr. J. He is one of the smoothest releases in the game. Pretty close to perfect SIGs. Uh, Pro 2 fade. It does everything on the court at a super high level. The card is absolutely phenomenal, of course. I mean, as Dr. J always is in my team, it seems like. But this year especially, I mean, I knew his. I knew from the time that his Pink Diamond came out that when he got a better card than that Pink Diamond. Really, when, from the time his Amethyst came out. Because that card was phenomenal in Season 1. We knew Dr. J was going to be incredible this year. He was amazing last year. And overall, he's just so complete and so good. Really not missing anything important at all. Huge player build defense really well afro makes him super tall he's the second best in the game but the best is glenn rice and i don't think this is all that debatable as good as all these other cards are glenn rice at 6 8 with a 6 9 wingspan and patty mills base he's the best card in the game right now he's still insanely complete they gave him half movable enforcer at 6 8 as well so he's got elite level size shot creation release everything e everything everything is elite about this card and he is right there with the very best shooting guards in the game bar none no, not the very best cards in the game he's the best card in the game and he is the best shooting guard in the game as well so that is good for this video hope y'all did enjoy if you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. I appreciate y'all. Peace.